We, where we left off is when uh, the Beatles had their first number one back home, Please Please Me, and yeah. then things really started to go crazy. They started to write more uh, musically, and, they, and, they, and the next song they wrote, when you, you brought up Roy Orbison. Yes. So the next song they wrote was really kind of in the Roy Orbison vein with their, their second hit, The, the Oh, yeah. If there's anything I do wrong, if there's anything I can do, just call on me and I'll send it along. Says, this is the first time they got a little more involved with the with the chord cheese. I've got arms and long to hold you. Ooh, C minor to you know a G minor on to C seven and keep you by my side. I got lips and long to kiss you, keep you satisfied. Ooh. And that who <laughs> was from Little Richard. Little Richard says, I taught Paul how to do that. Because they had met Little Richard and played with them, you know, as well. Uh, and and just doing that. If you remember, the, you know, the original Beatles when you first said that, they'd go, Hoo! and the girls would just, yeah. not a dry seat in the house, as they would say. Yeah. <laughs> because this was just, it just never happened before. You know, back then, girls didn't wear jeans. They wore skirts. And boys had crew cuts. And you were going to grow up to be a soldier or an astronaut, let alone this androgynous rock and roll beast, you know, four-headed beast called the Beatles. So they brought a lot of change uh, socially to the world as, as we know it. So that was March of 63, and yeah. we didn't hear from them for almost a year. So they started playing and, and playing concerts and getting on BBC radio shows. Sure. And then they started doing these tours, still not America yet, but they went to Sweden. And ah. when they came back to Heathrow Airport, it was crazy, crazy crowds there. So crazy. There was a gentleman from America that was a television host who saw this melee upon the Beatles' uh, return to Heathrow. And uh, he thought, well, it must be, I don't know, the prime minister, what's going on here? The man's name was Ed Sullivan. And he says, what is this? Again, I got him with enough intuition, he said, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. And he found out, oh, they're here for, for the Beatles. And he did more investigating. Ended up uh, Sid Bernstein, who brought the Beatles to Shea Stadium, um, really arranged for them to go to Carnegie Hall but they weren't going to go unless they had a big hit because no British act had survived in America without a big hit. But it's kind of rewriting history because they had recorded what would be their big hit before they even went yes. to Sweden. Yes. Anybody know this one? Right. Oh yeah, I'll tell you something. Come on, clap. I think you'll understand. Say that something, sing it. I wanna hold your hand. 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 And of course, the famous. <laughs> <laughs> that was thanks to Brian, of course. Brian taught them bow. You know, the bow comes from days gone by with. You would bound if the queen didn't like it, off would come your head. Hmm. But it was the ultimate, you know, acknowledgement of the audience. 